you're watching Backyard Tech. Well, if you've ever been on a long flight, maybe four hours, maybe eight hours, maybe even overseas, you'll often find passengers will catch some Z's. They'll have a bit of a snooze. Flying can be tiring. Now, old mate has never been overseas, and I doubt I'll ever have the money to go overseas anytime soon, or ever. But I can vouch for the fact that, yes, I have fallen asleep on a flight from, Mel from Darwin to Brisbane and then Brisbane to Melbourne. It's a it can be tiring. But imagine if you'd fallen asleep mid-flight only to wake up in what could be considered a nightmare situation. It's bizarre news time here at the Backyard Tech Channel. This one, an Air Canada passenger wakes up locked in an empty, dark airplane after falling asleep mid-flight. From Backyard Tech, this is Bizarre News. G'day everyone. Thank you for tuning in. It is Bizarre News time here at the Backyard Tech Channel for a Tuesday morning. And I've got to admit, this would have to be a bit of a nightmare scenario, wouldn't it? Um, I want to thank Dan Calloway, good personal mate of mine, member of the Backyard Tech community, I guess you could say, for sending me this one. He initially sent me the Washington Post link. But the Washington Post is having a bit of a dummy spit with old mate and won't let me actually read it. I think I've read too many free articles lately. So I managed to search for it, found it from here with People magazine. And uh, this is bizarre. Air Canada passenger wakes up, lock, wakes up, I'm sorry, locked in empty dark plane after falling asleep mid-flight. The woman claims she woke up just before midnight on a, on a quote-unquote freezing cold plane with no power. So the whole plane was, uh, what do they call it, cold and dark. A passenger who was getting some shut-eye on a recent Air Canada flight woke up to find herself in a nightmare scenario. Tiffany O'Brien was travelling from Quebec City to Toronto after a weekend trip when she fell asleep mid-flight. When she woke up hours later, still buckled in her seat, she said she was completely alone and the plane was quote-unquote freezing cold and quote-unquote pitch black. According to a Facebook post shared by a woman who identifies herself as O'Brien's friend. Quote, I got super comfy reading my book happy I scored a row all to myself. Flight was about a quarter full. I fell asleep probably less than halfway through my short one and a half hour flight. I wake up around midnight a few hours after the flight had landed, freezing cold, still strapped into my seat in complete darkness. I'm talking pitch black, quote unquote. O'Brien wrote in a comment posted to Air Canada's page by her friend, Deanna Noel Dale, who said she'd been visiting in Quebec and who shared the full story on her behalf, identifying O'Brien as Tiffany Adams. Quote, when my seat is an inch back or my tray down, flight crew take notice, but yet missed, take, but sorry, let me start that one again. Quote, when my seat is an inch back or my tray down, flight crew take notice, but yet you missed a person still strapped into her seat and all go home, all go on home, close quote, she wrote. A representative for Air Canada tells people the airline is, quote, still reviewing this matter, close quote, and has, um, and has, quote, no additional details to share, but we have followed up with the customer and remain in contact with her, close quote. O'Brien explained that she tried to FaceTime Noel Dale as soon as she woke, but her battery was her bat her phone batteries her phone's battery, I'm sorry, died. She also notes that she was an quote unquote anxiety disorder that exacerbated the frightening ordeal. Quote, I can tell you how terrifying this was, close quote. Quote I'm trying to focus on my breathing and control my panic attack while I attempt to charge my phone by plugging it into every USB port I could find, close quote, she wrote. Quote, no luck, BC, when they shut the aircraft down, there is no power whatsoever. 
I'm full on panicking BC. I was... I want off this nightmare ASAP. Oh, because. Sorry. Because. Close quote. O'Brien then said she made her way to the cockpit where she attempted to use the plane's communication system, but the radio and walkie-talkies didn't work. Eventually, she found a flashlight and tried to use it to signal for help. I'm making some flashing SOS signals out the window, hoping someone sees me, she wrote. Quote, unquote. Using the flashlight, she claimed she was able to get the main cabin door open only to find herself 40 to 50 feet above the ground. She writes that she was hanging out of the door trying to get the airport ground crew's attention. Finally, after literally dangling her legs out the plane, she saw a crew member on luggage cart driving toward her. Quote, He is in shock asking how the hell they left me on the plane, close quote, she wrote. Quote, I'm wondering the same, close quote. O'Brien said she was then able to use a ladder to climb down and was met by Air Canada representatives who offered her a limo and a hotel, but she says she declined both. She wanted to go home and had to work in the morning. Oh, boy. During calls with the airline on Monday and Tuesday, she claims, representative, she claims representatives Air Canada asked her to recount her bizarre experience and told her, quote, they will do an investigation, BC. They have to. They have checks in place that should prevent people from being locked on an aircraft at night. Close quote. She said. Ten days after the incident, O'Brien said she had been unable to sleep because she she has been having quote unquote recurring night terrors, and keeps quote unquote waking up anxious and afraid. I'm alone, locked up in some dark place. Air Canada responded to the Facebook post writing they were, quote, very concerned, close quote, and promising to, quote, unquote, look into it, according to the Associated Press. The post has received more than 800 comments as of midday Monday. Wow. Um, what do you say to that? Well, there's a few things to kick this one off. There goes my phone. First off, how did Air Canada miss the passenger? If this story is actually true, how did Air Canada flight staff miss this passenger passed out in the chair? It's the first thing. Second thing, how did the cleaning people not see her? And uh, I've got to say, a one and a half hour flight, like, to give my international viewers an idea, Melbourne to Sydney, say, Tullamarine to Mascot Airport, or Melbourne Airport to Sydney Airport, I say Tullamarine to Mascot, is about at worst an hour and a bit, maybe an hour and ten if you've got a headwind, all right? Brisbane, you can do in about two and a half to three hours. I've never fallen asleep to Brisbane. I've never fallen asleep to Sydney. I have fallen asleep Darwin to Brisbane. That's a pretty long flight. I have fallen asleep Melbourne to Alice. How, how did the flight staff miss that one? If this story is 100% true, how did the cleaners and the flight staff not notice, let alone the captain and co-pilot, not know there was someone still there? That one's bizarre. That one's really, really weird. Thank you, Dan Calloway, for that. That one's got my head scratching a little bit, actually. I don't know how, how that could happen. You'd think you'd, you'd, you'd think there'd be checks and balances in that. There'd have to be checks and balances in that. Well, at least you'd hope there were checks and balances in that. 
The only thing I can say is, whoops, there we go. That, uh, that'll do it for the day here. I may or may not be able to get a driving video out. It'll depend on whether the dash cam behaves. <laughs> if not, I'll catch you tonight. Have a good one all. Cheers.